Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? I am your planetary defense commander, Star-Lord Newthor 7, the T. And because World War 3 has not broken out in the last month, though we've gotten really, 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 really close four times, which you guys would have noticed if, if you weren't paying attention to politics, I'm just glad we're all still here. And we still have another second chance to make the world a better place. All right, we're looking at sprites as I try to get back into the swing of things. And sprites are a pretty radical um, new phenomenon that nobody can explain. They happen above storms, and they seem to be getting more bigger and more pronounced. Hurricane season is starting to get underway and get into the swing of things as we have, what is it called, 1E or some shit? Um, most of the models have it taking out to sea, but two models have it curving back in towards the Baja Mexico area so we won't pay attention though as far as I know the only hurricanes that I can guarantee you that are going to be life-threatening to Americans are going to come in September two of them possibly and one in October it will probably be category four category five and they'll probably carve out parts of the coast so get prepared now I'm guessing Florida and the upper east coast but I still got a couple months I may change that but I'm pretty sure about the hurricanes, but I'm not sure about the location. I'm just trying to make educated guesses. Great good weather guy, the king of weather Twitter, has also been taking a break from weather because it's been a slog the last few years. I highly recommend his blog. I'll leave a link for you in the box. He does it almost every day, and it's really good. Our Atlantic jet weirding has resulted in a configuration of our systems into the shape of a tooth. I'm not sure what we can teleconnect with that, but maybe lots of I-95 snow. That's a joke. That, that's a can't miss promise as we know. So yeah, it's a giant tooth, man. I feel like I'm going to get a big bill just for looking at that cranky. All right. And let everybody know, I have been working on, I'll tell you, I, I don't know. One of the things is when things, I've been working on a Eclipse video for a long time. So when it comes out, it's going to be really good. I like my summer videos. But then when I work on, a, when I, I when I don't have the mental focus, Meaning, because a lot of times in my videos, the edited, I like to leave you guys on an upbeat note and with positivity and humor. And so when I don't have the uh, mental capacity to translate that along to you, I, I just keep working. And so, like, here's an hour long of, like, 10-second video clips of all the videos and stuff I've edited together. So hopefully my brain comes back together. I can start churning out the edited videos again. But yeah, we got a, we got a big deal coming up. Um, you have a eclipse, full solar eclipse coming in on the 2nd of July. And the last time we had a full solar eclipse in 2017, Texas got hit with Harvey. So I definitely have post solar eclipse PTSD and I expect the weather to get the weather to get extremely weird after the second, especially about three to five days after so. If you if the world wasn't exciting and weird enough for you yet, just hang in there. And um, interesting things like we have our total solar eclipse and Cancer on the second, then Mercury goes retrograde on the seventh of July, and then on July eleventh you have the Sun Earth Saturn opposition. On July twelfth, Chiron goes retrograde. You have a partial lunar eclipse in Capricorn on the sixteenth of July. July thirty first, Mercury goes direct, and then August eleventh, Jupiter goes direct. And so we're in July, we're going to have Jupiter retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, Neptune retrograde, Mercury retrograde, Ceres retrograde, Chiron retrograde, Haumea retrograde. So it is definitely going to be a crazy, crazy, crazy July. So I hope everybody's resting up. I know I have been. Um, and because it's going to be a wild July, people. All right. But in, at the very start of 2017, I tried to tell everybody that the rain rates are, were just going to start to be eye-poppingly freaking crazy. And Beth Carpenter is telling us it's incredible to see just how wet the second two-thirds of the U.S. have been this year. Taking a closer look at the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, most places have seen 20 to 30 inches of liquid precipitation with localized amounts to 40 to 50, which is an astounding 20 to 40 inches above normal for some. So, yep. Um, you know, the, a lot of my predictions have come true, along with uh, it's getting definitely earthquakey. 
And let me explain it to people. You know, you don't have to agree. Science doesn't agree. Most people don't agree. But this is what happens. You got to, like this year, you've had, we've had more coronal holes on the sun than I've ever seen. And the coronal hole lets out solar wind. And so the solar wind feeds the earth through the auroras. And that is what grows our core. And so that is why we are seeing the earthquake activity. And that's why we'll continue to see more earthquake and volcano activity. And because the sun is literally growing its children like an umbilical cord. So if you think about it, it all makes total sense. Um, I would tell you why science has been fibbing to you for a long time, but then I, I get in a lot of trouble every time I say that sentence. Okay. I'll just say that. What they're telling you about petroleum is probably not accurate. Okay. So this is the oceans. This is precipitable water. And you can see that this is curling a giant tail up towards Mexico. Uh, the models ha have this thing going out to sea. But if it doesn't, it has a ton of moisture. Right now, uh, all the, the biggest problems before the shift happens. Look at that. That is just... That is incredible. I don't think I've ever seen that this much total precipitable water on the map at one time. And so I guess with all the heat going on in our core, uh, Mother Nature is having to adjust herself with wetness, kind of like a, as a human being sweats. All right? All right, cool. I love you. I missed you. See, we got a 6.4 in Russia. It seems to be pretty upticky today. Here's our 1E uh, cyclone. Um, like I said, we will keep watching that thing. These models show it going straight out to sea, so they're saying don't worry about it. And I won't worry about it much until it gives us something to worry about. Hey, look, Venus, Earth, and Jupiter line up every 11 years. Also, every 11 years, the sun loses its spots. Coincidence? Maybe not. So, hey, guess what? Yeah, the stuff I've been talking about for the last few years where... The planets and the alignment of the planets has a major effect on not only the sun, but all the other planets in our solar system. So when you have this much imbalance, because Jupiter and Saturn are massively huge, and you have all these planets on the same side, it's in planetary orbital angular momentum. It's a real thing that it affects things. And so, you know, the, the, the our solar system is, is a really magical thing. So this is it's kind of crazy to tell people in 2019 because everybody either believes the boogeyman controls all the weather or carbon controls all the weather. When it's the sun, the solar system, and probably our star field. Okay, da-da-boo. Now we have our first tropical depression on the 2019 Eastern Pacific tropical cyclone season. What's the rule of thumb? That at the end of every giant storm, the tail, there's another storm. Thanks, da-da-da-boo. Right. See, there was the Russian earthquake, 6.4. It's, hey, look over I think it's from Russia somewhere near there the plume of ash from the Rayo Kokoki this is from the 22nd but this is definitely one of the most impressive volcano pictures I've ever seen as far as the upwards plume uh, Papakatepel has been going I, I would say it's the most active volcano in the world this year it's been almost non-stop for 2019 and um I don't ne ever know why. Uh, there was a point, was it March, where I lost my computer and Chris Smith sent me a new one. And But it, I had literally been spending a couple of days putting together all the highlights of the Papakatepel volcano that, all year. Because it's just been, I mean, if you when you put them in context of like visually showing it how much it's erupting, it was pretty impressive. But like I said, I lost my computer for three for uh, three weeks and had to get a new one. So that seems like a pretty dangerous topic until I can get on solid footing. I won't try to put that video together anytime soon. Okay. Dry, dusty desert air from Africa will likely keep the Africa basin free of tropical storms for a while. As I've said, um, you know, I until I have a reason to have a high alert for hurricanes, I won't be being like, oh my God, hurricanes. And if you check last year, this time I was like, oh my God, hurricanes. So, um, but yeah, one thing that's interesting is if my planetary angular orbital momentum theory is correct, and I'm pretty sure it is, that means that the 
pressure of the gas giants and the pressure of Eris and the pressure of the outside forces in our solar system are going to be, are the things that help contribute to the major storms and the hurricanes. So they believe that hurricanes are like a product of heat in our atmosphere. And so if my theory is correct, around the dates, the middle of September and the middle of October, it doesn't matter how much dust is in the air or how much the ocean is hot, you're still going to get a hurricane. So I, I don't know, this, this will be the make or break year for my theory where, you know, if we do get hurricanes around the middle of September and the middle of October, that means my theory is correct. And especially if I would like, I mean, if it does it through Saharan air, then we know 110%. Okay. So there's a, a rough breakdown. And good news, but still really not that great news. The, I checked the river flooding levels, and they were at 184, I believe. So, I had it up. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. So, this is uh, a marked improvement from 400 or 300 that we'd been stuck at for almost a month. I know that it's caused a lot of problems the weather videos I've been editing together, like there's been so much major destruction across our nation and all nations by these earth weather changes because we're going to be going through this for six more years. And my fear is that they're going to blame it all on carbon. They're going to try and press a carbon tax on you. And then, you know, so if it is the planetary or momentum, then they're just going to hoodwink everybody, kind of like they did with 9-11. That's why I've been highly recommending people work together uh, so that we can get past our oil and war economy and build a better world. They have everybody so focused on politics, we're going to need a miracle. Yeah, I mean, you've got major problems. Our infrastructure is built for like the 60s and it's built to make your gasoline more expensive. So I've been highly recommend we modernize our infrastructure for a long time, but nobody's listening yet crazy world man but you know what is funny i was thinking about this the other day where i know i mean there are crazy really super rich people who wouldn't mind depopulating the earth and then having it as their little luxury spot but depopulation would be an extremely complex multi-layered event um that's pretty much impossible by by my every way i've calculated it out and it's one of the reasons I, i've been doing this channel and been being your planetary defense commander because Trying to tell people who've been surrounded by yes men their whole lives that no, you're wrong. It'll never work. And the best way I have, and a metaphor to sum this up, is lo check the love lives out of the richest, most powerful people in the last five years. And so, if you can't even handle a basic marriage, how the hell do you think you're going to pull off some grand scheme that would need everything to go perfectly and still then would never work? You know, I don't know, man, but I'm still alive. So that's a freaking miracle. If you guys knew everything that had going on behind the scenes in the last month, A, you would love me more. And B, whoa, what's going on at the bottom? But I want you guys to know I love you. And that that's why I'm here doing it, because there are good people out there. We don't ever get really any rewards. We don't ever get any press. We don't. But we're hanging in there because things are going to change one way or another and so the knocked loose in clouds everybody's flipping out because we're, we've been getting up pretty major big explosions of knocked loose in clouds the knocked loose in clouds invade the usa again earth's mesosphere is still unusually wet the proof was in the skies in the usa on june 24th so yeah the upper atmosphere is still unusually wet guys when knocked loose and clouds appeared at a record low latitudes for the second time this month. Electric blue waves rippled over Las Vegas, Joshua Tree, Salt Lake City, New Mexico, and an extremely extreme outburst over Europe. Another thing, and so, yeah, I mean, that's why I, I like to just say, we don't, dude, it's best to keep an open mind about the sun and the weather and our star field. And it's best not to try and squeeze all the information coming in into some preconceived box. Okay, so yeah, Europe has a heat wave coming that is like breaking all records. Okay, hell is coming. 
And so I do believe that our attitudes, our thoughts, and our emotions affect everything around us. It's called quantum physics, people. And so it affects the sun. And so that's one of the reasons like I've been saying stay cool. And be cool, stay cool. And that nobody's done that. And I mean, I don't I understand it's hard. <laughs> and um, and the, the only way to get popular or make a lot of money is to not be cool, to like blame everybody else for everything and be angry at people all the time. So I get it, yeah. But like, honestly, dude, if people don't calm the fuck down and stop being total fucking dicks all the time, well, we might not make it through 2019. Because I know that, like, Madrid is getting anywhere from 107 to 111 degrees. Uh, and that I got a pretty nasty storm coming through the heat waves, Europe. Because, as I've said to me, the Earth is both cooling and heating at the same time. The Earth is a McDLT lava lamp, okay? So you're going to get really cold spots and really hot spots. Because we have no balance in our solar system or, or in our society. So... I mean, those are some scary temperatures. Like, I'm I'm wondering, I, I mean, we're going to see, like, the hottest places in America, I think, like Arizona break heat records. Are we going to see, like, 130 degrees, 140 degrees in some places? You know, and another thing, and, like, let me tell you, dude, like, here's a reason, one of the main re a lot of reasons I don't believe in any politicians. Um, It was, like, 2012, somewhere around there, they came out with a report that said, we could totally modernize and improve our electric grid for anywhere from fifty billion to two hundred billion dollars all across the United States. Like we could put in an, a modernized power grid for basically was it like five percent of our usual deficit or like three percent of our actual what we bring in every month is a year. And so no politician, Republican, or Democrat has ever said, you know what we need to do? We need to modernize our infrastructure. We need to modernize our power grid. We need to. And so we, I think this summer is going to be a huge test that shows us just how weak and piece of shit our power grid is. And on top of that, PG&E, the quote unquote most pop, you know, the biggest electricity and energy provider in California, just declared bankruptcy, man. Anyway, I'm just, you know, that. I don't get a lot of flack for being the only person in the world who doesn't really believe in politicians, but I'm just going to stick with my guns because I'm who I've been. And uh, politicians are pretty much just mascots for corporations. And if you think corporations are going to solve our problems, well, you got another thing coming. The good news is corporations are people. And so they have to work with us or, you know, you can either adapt or perish. I've always been for adapting. I've always been for being cool, bringing back rock and roll comedy, and trying to have a fun summer, but I know the energy the last few days has been weird. Anyway, so this has been, I'm trying to get back in the swing, and I think the majority of people here know that I've got a great heart. I care about y'all. I care about our world. I care about the animals. I care about the oceans. And that I'm doing what I can to bring everyone from the tippy top to the bitty 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 bottom the truth and possible solutions for us to make it into the future so yeah i'm a superhero real life superhero dude i'm a good guy so that in itself is a reward but i got a feeling this i was watching leo king and he's talking about maybe i misinterpreted it but he said the the solar eclipse that coming up it's gonna have like venus between dark moon lilith and so you're gonna get Dark Moon Lilith is like super evil, <laughs> um, in my opinion. And she's just mean and vindictive and loves shouting fruit. And so, I don't know, maybe I miss her. I miss her him. And I don't want to like, you know, I, I like to make you guys optimistic, but he made it sound like we're going to get like an angry Venus, Dark Lilith, full moon solar eclipse. And I was like, oh, geez, man. <laughs> That's not good, you know? Anyway, so I don't know. We're going to have to boost up our positivity our superpowers somehow find a good way to stay positive it's like i've been in a weird mood because 
you know, the things I want in the world is a good, or wanted was a good woman and possibly children someday. And that seems like romance is just totally impossible that social networking has allowed every single person to remain connected to every lover, girlfriend, boyfriend, ex-husband, ex-wife they've ever had. And so that is a major reason we as a society can't move forward. We can't heal our wounds. Like, we just can't get past the past because everybody's so busy stalking all their exes and then still doing what they can to, like, screw up the, the people's lives of, like, I don't want you to be happy. Whether it be two years later, five years later. Um, you know, so that's a problem. But I don't, I still have this weird, like, more than ever, I have a feeling the good guys are going to win. And, and it's almost like a steady calm now. So I try to handle it well. Anyway, being kind of chatty, but trying to get back into it. And like literally the last few days, I've just been trying to finish an edited video, but I just can't find the the perfection. I don't know if you saw the last video, edited video I did called Endgame. I think it's, I, I think one more of the best filmmakers on the planet. Um, and that it's, it's definitely the best video I ever made. And it puts in, it packs in so much good information. I'd watch it if you haven't checked it out. Anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you. I'll try and pick you up when you're down and pick me up when I'm down. I'm not necessarily down. I'm just kind of numb. You know, I'm like waiting. I'm, I'm detaching from almost emotion for hurricane season because it's going to be bad, people. You know? Um, and I, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But I don't think I am. Anyway, all right. So you guys stay cool. And I'll try and get better at this. Okay, peace out. God bless everyone.